Hi, I'm Chris. I am a PhD student at Montana State University. Hi, I'm Trevor, and I'm a PhD student at Montana State University. Okay. Hello, I'm Ross Snyder, and I'm a professor in the Electrical and Computer Engineering Department at Montana State University. Now we'll see the four audio personalities which we've put in the fabric. The four personalities are hearing aid, cochlear processor, pitch shift, and ring modulator. This is personality one. It uh, is a basic hearing aid with four bands. And we created this personality in Simulink, uh, created the model in MATLAB Simulink, and then created the HDL from there. But essentially, we're taking um, 48 kilohertz audio in from the codec, and then we are downsampling that into four bands. Um, at, there's a 12 kilohertz, 6 kilohertz, 3 kilohertz, 1500, kilohertz, 1500 hertz. There is a, uh, a band pass on each band. Um, we have gains coming in, so we can gain each band, and then each band is then upsampled and combined back together and output. This is a demo of the hearing aid. The hearing aid uh, passes 250 to 4 kilohertz in total. So right now we're going to play a speech signal um, with all of the bands enabled. The discrete Fourier transform of a real valued signal is conjugate symmetric. Okay, so that's what happens when all the bands are enabled. Um, so now let's disable all the bands except for one, and that band is the one to two kilohertz band, and we can do that in Linux via a shell script. The discrete Fourier transform of a real valued signal is conjugate symmetric. This is what it sounds like when we've disabled all the other bands. Hi, I'm Chris. I'm responsible for the cochlear processor. Um, we modeled that the front end of the processor in MATLAB and Simulink. And the, um, the stages of processing are we generate subbands, we rectify those subbands, and then we modulate those subbands onto a pulse train. And uh, <clears throat> we do this on a chirp which resides in the fabric. There are multiple parts to this. So we have a chirp um, being generated. We have a cascaded FIR bank. Um, there's two parts of that. Um, there's uh, breaking it up into eight bands using uh, high pass, low pass FIRs and their associated coefficients. We have a rectifier, which is um, extracting the envelope. And then the output of that processing is then modulated onto a pulse train, which is what is happening on this block here. Um, if we go all the way back up to the top, um, this block here is being converted to HDL and then being wrapped onto the QSIS bus where the output of all that filtering and those subbands is memory mapped um, as registers under the QSIS bus. And then the sampling rate is tied to interrupts which are sent to the um, kernel driver um, residing in Linux. I am Chris again. Um, right now I'm going to demo the, the Intan RHS2116 Neural Stimulator Record um, chip that we've interfaced for Personality 2. Here's a look at the breakout board, but essentially we're sending spy commands to this chip, which are then sending out um, current pulses, and we're doing that via the per switch into Personality 2 and the driver user space chain. So right now I'm going to demo that, so I'm going to come over here and switch into Personality 2. It's loading the uh, kernel driver, it's loading the user space driver, and then now we're looking over here and we're seeing it starting to put out the current pulses after we've separated out that uh, chirp signal in the fabric. This is personality three, the pitch shift. And so as opposed to the other ones, we're doing this in the frequency domain. So the overview of what we're doing, we frame the signal, then we do the frequency domain, shifting, and then we reconstruct the signal. So if we look at the analysis, we do the frame buffering, and then we do an FFT. Then we come in and do the frequency shifting. And then in the synthesis, we reconstruct the signal, we take the inverse FFT, and then we overlap and add the frame.
Now we're going to show you a demo of the pitch shift. First, we'll do it with zero shift. So I'll play that for you. The discrete Fourier transform of a real valued signal is conjugate symmetric. And now I'll play it with a shift of almost one kilohertz. The discrete Fourier transform of a real valued signal is conjugate symmetric. This is personality four, the ring modulator. And so here we're sending in a signal and then we multiply it by a sinusoid. And it ends up sounding a little bit like the Daleks. The um, transform of a real valued signal is conjugate symmetric. Now that we've seen all the different audio personalities, how are we uh, how are we switching between them? So uh, to to switch the personalities which exist in the fabric, when I flip a switch here, um, we are actually reloading the FPGA and how we're doing that. We have a user space program which is watching switches which exist in all four uh, um, images or personalities. And when we detect a uh, switch flip, we modify the active device tree um, that's residing in Linux and essentially we tell, we insert which new RBF or image we want to load and then we also stitch in um, a descriptor of the peripheral that exists in the fabric so that the drivers which we write can now look at that, um, that peripheral in the device tree and initialize. And then after that, a user space program can then use that driver to do whatever it wants to do. And then essentially we do all of that in reverse when we want to unload the current personality and then load into another one.